and in this part we will talk about the best architecture for an angular 2 application how we can create and manage a component how we can do different templating and binding before get started i want to tell you a secret that if you are interested to make a relationship with angular 2 you should know that angular 2 carries two step children and also you might have to deal with an unwanted stepdad called TypeScript. Don't worry much about this stepdad and stepchildren. In this tutorial, we have used Angular CLI to create Angular 2 application. If you go to the Visual Studio, you will see like we have like uh, a lot of files. Don't pay much attention on this. We just open the package.json and you will see in this part, the dependencies, you have bunch of module of Angular. Time to tile, we will import those or get those in our component. And these are two step child, the rxjs, zone.js. And here is the dev dependencies, which you need just for the development purpose in your machine. And Angular CLI is one of them and bunch of Jasmine and Karma to create and run unit test. And the last part is your stepdad type script. In the folder structure, you have into end testing. Don't have to much pay attention right now and node modules this is where all this module stays for your development purpose and this is the main folder you have to go which is the source code inside source you have seen the app component and few other files like assets where you will have your sbc's or any other asset this is the different environment related configuration if you need this is the lending html or index.html and most of the time we don't have to touch anything there and few others about your central styles and the test and few other configs that we don't need to worry much about right now we will first create a component and then look into different pieces of a component and to see how a component could be created we will go to the github page of angular cli and after scrolling a little bit you will see ng generate component and you will give the name of the component or a short form which is like ngg g stands for generate and you will write component and the name of the component so we will follow exactly the same thing by going to the command line interface first we will press ctrl c to terminate the current execution of the code and then we will type ngg component and name of the component will give circular and if I press enter, it will create four files, updated one file. We will look into the update part little later. First, we'll go to the Visual Studio code. This is the circular folder, the component we have created. You can think of a component as a room in your house and it has four pieces. The first part is CSS. That's why it's called circular.component.css. That means this is the style for circular component. This is like a painter guy who puts color on the wall or any other things. The second part is circular component.html where all the structure layout of the room exists. This is like architect. The third part is unit test. It's like a stepchild you don't care much about at the beginning who might give you pain later. And the fourth part is circular.component.ts which is the most powerful part of this component. You can think of it as your girlfriend who makes all the decision about your house. If you open CSS first, at the beginning it's empty. That means there is no style here. If you open the HTML file, you will have a simple paragraph tag which says circular works. We will skip the step child right now and we will go to the most powerful part of this component. If you look into this component, you will see at top we are importing two things from angular core we are importing the component so that we can create a component class here and we are importing something called on init and here some information about this component what it says is says selector app circular app in front of it because it is under the app and then circular is the name of your component and then it says the template url is component html which is this file and this is component.css which is the style in the bottom of this file you will see like export class circular component implements on init this is a circular component class that implements on init from angular core and inside it you have the constructor of any class and then ng on init this ng on init is an event hook 
that would be executed every time this class is initiated. There are few other event hook could be added to Angular component. If you want to know more about event hook, you can go to Google and search for Angular 2 component lifecycle. And if you click on the first search result, you will go to the Angular document and there is bunch of other event hook. If you needed, you can spend your weekend to know more about them. We will go back to the component. Now we'll see the binding and templating how this thing happens. Since this is a class, it could have properties here. I will make this property public and then I will name it as happy text. Happiest time for me is manager is on vacation. Now my goal is to display this property in the HTML. So what I will do, I will go to the HTML which has circular works. I will create another paragraph tag. The goal of this paragraph tag will be bind to the happy text property I have created. To make this binding happen, I have to do two curly braces. Inside this, I will write happy text, the property and save it. Now I will run the code. So I will type ng serve here and I will go to the browser. So I will do localhost 4200. I see hello Angolulu baby, but I don't see anything circular works or the happy text. To see it in the browser, what I have to do, I have to go to app.component.html because it's currently showing whatever in that HTML. So if I go there and I need to add circular component in this HTML because this is the opening HTML. I have to go to the circular component.ts and know the selector. This is the selector for this component. If I copy it and create an HTML tag in the app.component.html with this. So I will do app circular and create an HTML tag here. This is how we are using circular component here in the app.html. And now if we go to the browser, we will see circular works and manager is on vacation. Now the question is like why we need to add it in the app components because of app.module.ts that we didn't talk about before. So app.module.ts is the gate of your house. So if you open the app.module.ts, you will see like bunch of import from Angular and import of two component. One is the app component that Angular CLI created. And second one is the circular component that you have created. And you see that you declare two things, app component and circular component. And below it, there are few other things is imports. We don't need to worry about right now about that providers and bootstrap. So this bootstrap tells which component you will start with. Since this application is starting with app component, that's why it was showing um, app component as default. And if you want to add something in this app component, we have to put it in the app component.html file. That's what we did it here. That's why it shows manager is on vacation. If I add more HTML here, like I create an S3 and I write, I am Jangululu. I am the partner of Angululu, save it. You will see this will get immediately reflected. And in this browser, this part is your app.component and this is your circular component. If we go back to the circular component.ts, we have seen ng on it. So in the initialization, we want to change the text. We want to change this text. That means we want to change the value of happy text. To access happy text, we have to write this dot happy text and we'll set values. And another happy moment for us would be manager is sick. If the manager isn't feeling very well, he would not be in office and we'd be happier. Now, if we go to the browser, we we'll see manager is sick. So this is the simple way of a binding, but if you want to bind to an event, for example, we want to create a button that will change the value of this happy text. So we will do here, create a button and this button will have text make me happier. So this will have a click handler. First go to this component and create the click handler. We will create an event handler. We will name it make happier. And we will use the same approach to change happy text. So we'll type this dot happy text. And the most happiest news for us is manager got fired. If I save it and if I go to the UI, this will not do anything because button doesn't have an event bind to this method we just created. So we will go to the HTML 
and we will create an event binding the name of the event is click and the method we want to bind we already created here so we'll just copy make happier and here we will paste it and then we'll give curly braces if we put the curly braces that angular node this is a method execution we will save it and now we'll go to the browser if you get here you will see manager is sick if you want make yourself more happier you will click this button and you will see yay manager got fired the last binding we will look into is binding to a collection say for example if i have a array of to-do list so i will create a property and i will definitely make it public and name of the property is my to-dos and i will have a collection bunch of tasks here so the first to do is wash coffee mug second to do is take a shower and third to do is say hi to the new hire and we will stick to this three task for now in the ui we will loop through these items and bind to a list that's why we here we will come and create an ordered list and then we will have multiple list item and this list item we will do star and z4 and inside this we will create a block variable let to do of my to do's and then inside it we will put like curly braces to do and then angular will loop through all the items in the to do's and bind to the dom and if you go to the browser you will see all the three items here like other items if you go to the component and add a new item in your collection shampoo you're here and if you save it you come to the browser you'll see like the browser reloaded and added a new to-do list for you that's all about part two of this tutorial we talked very high level of the architecture of an angular 2 application we talked about component how you can create them and then we talked about template binding and also how you can bind event to an angular application